The Northwest is one of the most seismically active regions in the United States. The threat of an earthquake at any given moment is real in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Right below our feet is the meeting place of multiple tectonic plates slowly moving and pushing against each other. The edges of those masses move and break, causing the ground to shake or volcanoes to form. The place where two of these tectonic plates meet, the Juan de Fuca plate and the North American plate, sits just off the coast and poses the biggest threat for a major earthquake and potential tsunami. It's called the Cascadia Subduction Zone. And that's why we talk about things like drop, cover, hold on. Harold now, Tobin is Washington State Seismologist depth, and Director of the Pacific Northwest um, Seismic Network. Most earthquakes happen in the crust, um, and a few happen just in the parts of the Earth's mantle that are down these things called subduction zones. The Cascadia Subduction Zone is a megathrust fault, or the meeting place of two tectonic plates. The Juan de Fuca plate is being forced under the North American plate at a convergent boundary. Friction keeps the plates from moving, but when the force of the plates grows too strong, friction gives way and the plates suddenly move and then stop. The sheer size of the fault means it is capable of producing some of the strongest earthquakes in the world. A magnitude 8 or 9 earthquake off the coast could cause widespread devastation. The movement of those plates is also capable of producing a devastating tsunami along the Pacific coast in Puget Sound. Not all earthquakes occur at the meeting place of tectonic plates. Some, like the Nisqually earthquake in 2001, are caused by the cracking of just one of the plates. As the Juan de Fuca moves underneath the North American plate, the edges become brittle as they are pushed downward. Cracks form in the massive tectonic plate, causing the ground above to shake. While they can still cause devastation, these tend to be weaker than megathrust faults and often don't produce a tsunami threat. The most common fault in the Northwest is the Crustal Fault. Relatively small cracks forming along the edge of the North American plate, often closer to population centers than their deeper counterparts. Crustal earthquakes are caused by the ground being pushed or pulled apart by the movement of the plate boundary. While those faults don't have the potential to produce a mega earthquake, a magnitude 7 close to a city center still poses a major threat. The two biggest crustal faults are the Seattle Fault and South Whidbey Island Fault. The other sleeping giants of the Northwest are the volcanoes. The final threat of earthquakes in the Northwest comes from volcanic activity. The moving magnum beneath the Earth's surface causes changing pressure on the tectonic plates. The changing pressure creates faults or shaking as the ground moves below. Oftentimes, we hear of cluster quakes. They signify movement, but not impending eruption. However, long period quakes like what led up to Mount St. Helens are often a sign of something bigger looming. The intensity of an earthquake at a given point not only depends on the strength, but the location. When we talk about earthquakes, you will often hear the term epicenter. That is the point on the Earth's surface directly above where the earthquake originates or takes place. Directly below the epicenter is the hypocenter, or the exact point of origin of the earthquake. From the hypocenter, waves of movement propagate or spread outward. Primary waves, or P waves, travel fast through solids, liquids, and even gas. They move like a slinky, compressing and extending out. These cause the fast shaking of an earthquake. Shear waves, or S waves, move slower, perpendicular to the direction of travel, like shaking the end of a rope or waves on the surface of the ocean. This is the rolling motion felt in certain earthquakes. We don't feel a lot of earthquakes around here. It's been a pretty long time since we had a, a really strong one in our region, but we know we have the hazard from earthquakes. By monitoring and studying earthquakes, we can better understand the dangers around us and be more prepared when they happen. For Environment Northwest, I'm meteorologist Jeremy Legu.